we're going to start this video talking about the cross products just by doing a quick review or maybe even um, you're seeing it for the first time how to calculate second order determinants as well as third order determinants. So second order determinants you always uh, multiply along the diagonals and you're going to do the product of this diagonal always top left to bottom right minus the product of this one. So this is going to be 2 times 3 minus 4 times negative 1, which the value of that determinant is 10. And we're going to have to use that to evaluate the third order determinant. You evaluate the third order determinant doing um, an expansion by minors is what it's called. So basically what's going to happen is we're going to look at the first row. We're going to take the first element of the first row, 1 and multiply it by the second order determinant that would be left if you take out the row and column that 1 is in. So if you take that out, you'd be left with negative 2, 5, 3, 2. So we're going to move across the row. We did 1. Now we move to 4. For that middle one, though, you always subtract. So minus 4 times. Again, take out the row and column 4 is in. You'd be left with the second order determinant 7, 5, negative 1, 2. Move from the 4 to the 6. That one we add. So you're always subtracting this one, adding this one. And if you take out the row and column 6 is in, you're left with the second order determinant 7, negative 2, negative 1, 3. Using the idea from right here, we evaluate these three second order determinants, so we're going to have 1 times, one times negative 19 minus 4 times 19 plus 6 times 19. So I don't have a calculator on me. Let's see how we can do this in our head. Make them all be times 19. So that's negative 5 plus 6. That's 19. Awesome. So that's how you calculate determinants second order determinants, two by twos, and third order, three by threes. So then getting to the cross product, we have u and v here, and we're going to be looking at u cross v. We always set up a third order determinant where u is going to be the middle row, v is going to be the bottom row. So 2, 4, negative 1, 0, 5, 3, the top row are our unit vectors, i, j, k. And then we evaluate this determinant just like we did above with that expansion. So we take i out, we'd be left with 4, negative 1, 5, 3. We always subtract that middle term, so minus j times oh, 2, negative 1, 0, 3, plus k times 2, 4, 0, 5. So then when we do this, do this uh, second order determinants, we're going to have 12 plus 5, so we have 17i, uh, 6 minus 0, so minus 6j, and 10, plus 10k. So that is u cross v. We can call that w. So that's how you calculate it. U cross V, we're going to call W. The important part of that is that if you do, if you do U dot W, you should get zero. If you do V dot W, you should get zero. Because W should be orthogonal to both. That's kind of the purpose of the cross product, is the result should be orthogonal to both vectors used. So U cross V, that result perpendicular to both u and v, right here. So then the last bit to talk about is how do you know which direction it's going to go? Because if you have um, u like this and v like that, so I'm trying to draw three-dimensionally here, your cross product could be going up, and that would be perpendicular to both, or it could be going down. And that would be perpendicular to both. 
So how do you know which direction your cross product is going? That depends on the order that you do the cross product. So for u cross v, we have to use the right hand rule. So the way that u and v are positioned in the picture, you put your hand and your fingers would be at the starting vector u and you would have to curl them to get to v and your thumb says alright then it's going up. So in the picture we have u cross v would be the red one. If we did v cross u using the right hand rule in order to make it so that our fingers curled to u we would have to turn our hand over so the fingers start at v then we would curl our fingers this way to get to u so v cross u would be going down. So when we talk about that right hand rule, that's what, we're, that's what we're trying to say is that you have to arrange your fingers along the first vector in such a way that you would curl them to get to the second and the thumb tells you the direction you're going. So in the XYZ system, you would have I and J, the unit vectors in the direction of X and Y axis. So to try and look at this idea of direction, I cross J, by the right hand rule, that would be K. Right hand rule tells us that should be going up. But if you flip that around and do J cross I, and do the right hand rule, that would give you the unit vector going down this way, so that's going to be negative K. So that's the idea of the right-hand rule. These examples here may help clarify that. But you have to know, for cross products, you have to know the determinants are how we calculate them. But then you have to know that this is the reason it's important, and you can always check by doing the dot products. They should be zero. And then the right-hand rule helps you decide which direction you're headed, right? Because in space, if you're orthogonal to two vectors, you could be going two different directions. And the right-hand rule and the order of the cross product is what determines the direction you're headed.